All right. Welcome to ZNN After Dark with our host, Dark Flame Wolf, Agent Exeter, and me, Lucario389. Tonight, we will be discussing mature topics and the Zootopia community as a whole. Things we will be discussing are wild ops, interspecies, OC characters, traumatic events, character deaths, world building, and realism. And with that, let's hop right on in. Agent? Okay, so wild hops. All right, so from my uh, sort of interpretation of wild hops is obviously Nick Wilde, Judy Hops in a romantic relationship. But of course, a lot of the wild hops media ranges from sort of the touchy good, feel good stuff that's, um, I don't want to say immature, but it's, um, uh, how can we say uh, kind of young love? Yes. Yes. Young love, um, that sort of thing. And then you have sort of the more sort of evolved sort of romantic, the, the nuances back and forth. It's almost like you're trying to earn it and you kind of get to it. And that's the payoff at the very end of the story. Some of it kind of feels artificial too. I'll give you that. I do. I do. I am a wild hops fan. That is my thing. But sometimes it just, I feel it's forced a lot of the times. I do, want, like, sometimes it's natural. Sometimes it does not feel natural. It just feels like it's wild hops just to be wild hops. There's, well, there's no solid believability to it. And I, I, I completely agree with you there. I mean, when I, I'm, I'm a complete wild hop shipper myself. And when I wrote for them, <laughs> in my story that will never be finished, but when I wrote for them, I literally waited five chapters before they even said they would want to be dating together. And then I treated them as a real couple. They have fights. They have um, realistic issues and problems with each other. They don't always work out. Um, and it's just I want to see that dynamicism in a relationship like this. Um, and a lot of people, I don't think, capitalize on it enough. Absolutely true. Absolutely true. I look at I'm it not, like this. Oh, I'm sorry. I continue. look at it like this is that it's almost like, and, and, and kind of in the same way that real relationships work is that are these, would these two people be friends together for the rest of their lives if they could? Let's just take the romanticism out of it for a second. If you can see these people being potentially like cohabitate the roommates, for example, for the rest of their lives, um, then it's almost like the romantic part on top of it adds to that initial relationship that's already there and capitalize on it. Now, of course, I may be a little bit biased because that's kind of the relationship I have with my wife, which is if we weren't married and we weren't together and we didn't have a kid, um, we could honestly see ourselves hanging out all the time because we enjoy each other's company. And you're right. We do have arguments. And those arguments do sort of um, um, like, you know, either are one sided or we both have a mutual sort of uh, fight about it. And we walk away from it angry. And whether the wrongness, like who's wrong or if there is even blame to assign, that kind of pales in comparison to just the fact that they had, they had that, we have that conflict. And then at the end of that, we find a way to come back to it. Whether we actually resolve the initial conflict or not, we still find a way to come back to it and say, oh, you know, I still want to be with this person. And I feel that Wild Hop should be similarly depicted. And that's that's because that's real, because that's how real relationships work. So the more it's written like a real relationship, the more believable it is, the more uh, satisfying it is. And then when you get to those lovey-dovey moments, it almost, it feels, it, it, it tickles your fancy more because you feel like you've, You've gone through the, the, the bitter to get to the sweet, and it tastes that much better. And I totally agree with that. There was a fanfic I was reading, I remember, a couple of years ago, and all it was was the plot. They were trying to solve uh, some sort of uh, caper or something, and in between the plot, it was just fluff. 
and stuff. And they had maybe one major fight, but then it was never referenced again. So with all this fluff and all these moments together um, just did not feel earned. They did not feel real. And it was just a, a, a pile of fluff writing on a sea of just, you know, exciting action and stuff. And it was just like, I don't see a relationship here. I just see puppy love and it does not feel believable to me. It's, it's there just to be there as wild hops. And uh, that's it. Yeah, there's there's plenty of slice of life fix out there. Some are really famous, some not so much. But a thing that's pretty popular is fluff just to be fluff. It's almost no nope, no plot, just fluff. It, it's you look at it and then like you hear those comments where people are like, "This is so sweet, I could get diabetes." Well, because there's so much fluff in the story, you burn yourself out on it. Yeah, exactly. It makes you, it's just, I, I, I understand some other stories out there, they do handle this really well. They got the action, they have the fights, they have the romantic tender moments, they've got everything. And then sometimes it just... Then you, then you just it a, is just a hopeful outlook, a naive look towards wild hops that just relationships just aren't like that. Which leads into the next thing that I think a lot of people really ignore is the whole interspecies aspect. And I kind of want to bring that up because um, in the beginning of the movie Zootopia, there was a lot of utopian like. Uh, features as in no prejudice, everybody could do what they wanted, could be anything. And then over the course of the movie, you started to see those prejudices underneath the surface. And then of course, when the Night Howler uh, crisis erupted, all those prejudices came to the fore. And then of course it got wrapped up in a neat little bow. They got together, they were partners. A new Fox was on the, the ZPD team. Everything was hunky dory. And then people treated that like all of a sudden prejudices and Zootopia were gone. The, if, if Judy and Nick were to have a relationship, um, it would be 100% okay with everybody in the city. And I'm just like, that's just not the case. I mean, real world-wise, those prejudices would still be there, and they would be facing hurdle after hurdle trying to get the relationship to work. I even touched on this in my own fic, uh, or my own fan fiction, uh, A Different Kind of Predator. Uh, there's some spoilers towards the end. Um, but in the beginning, uh, I do have an old lady who has what we would call in today's society old world views. And she uh, berates both Nick and Judy in my fanfic because that quote unquote it's not right a fox and a rabbit shouldn't be together it should be a fox and a fox and a rabbit and a rabbit even if they are the same gender though as long as they are the same species it's okay in her eyes yeah and that's just a lot of thing i think fanfics who ship wild hops kind of push to the side because it gets in the way of the relationship or fluff they're trying to write uh, do you find the same thing agent um, in terms of interspecies, yeah, I, I, I do. Um, one of the things that, um, and, and again, maybe this is because a, it's a Disney movie and B it was a movie. And this is, this is the kind of plot, the plot, the kind of, uh, plot and world building development we're looking at is in relationship to like something you would see in a TV series where you could be able to continue. I do feel that at the end it's. They they could easily say in the next movie, like in other words, that that getting back together thing is just because remember the epilogue was through Judy's point of view, who probably still has that. Uh, I want to say naivete. I mean, she has less of a naivete, but it's still there, and so she's saying, "Well, everything's hunky dory," and you're like, "Okay, but that's just through Judy's eyes." And it's like, if you really like, let's let's walk away from Nick and Judy for a second, go out into there, I and mean, you might find people still concerned about things going on. Um, like one of the one of the deleted scenes, uh, which 
I mean, I understand why they deleted it for time, but it was great content, which was where Judy's on the phone and you overhear her grandfather said, foxes are red because they're they're in the uh fox right because they're the devil or something <laughs> from the devil yeah yeah from exactly and it's like that's that's, that's, that's the perfect scene. kind of sort of prejudicial like mentality i'm like i mean i hate to say it but it's like this world needs a little bit of dirt for it to be a a, a little bit like because that believable? way we can root for it yeah well not only believable but it needs to get dirty so that when it cleans off we can celebrate it getting clean you know and you know what? That actually segues perfectly into our next topic. Actually, uh, original characters, other characters in Zootopia, and how they're reacting or, or operating in Zootopia away from Nick and Judy, or possibly alongside Nick and Judy. I mean, th those are characters that uh, a lot of people, or at least the fandom in general, at least until recently, I've seen have been kind of ignoring. Yeah. Uh, usually, when people think of a original character in a fanfic they always assume it's a self-insert or it's there just to mess with wild hops and i feel like that's not entirely true all the time sure there are self-inserts sure it feels like they it's just there to disrupt wild hops but there are fantastic fan fictions and comics out there judy is dead for instance uh, with Julie Hopps, original character, original concept. Everybody loved it. But I feel like it was also popular because it did not hurt Wild Hops. It, it, it did not upset the status quo. Exactly. But then you've got, uh, you got successful pure OC fanfics. I think it's a Pack Street, if I recall correctly. It's, it's just absolutely pos uh, popular, and I don't believe Nick or Judy or any of the main cast show shows up in it once. Mm -mm. I could be wrong. I've read a couple chapters. I thought it was quite entertaining. I enjoyed it. You've also got... Um, forgive me, but it's a, it's, a, uh, it's a moose detective who works on arson. He... Oh, I think I've heard of this one, but I don't know the name. It's a German name for fire or something like that. I can't remember what it is because it, it, it it's really hard for me to remember. But if you do know what I'm talking about, I it's a great original character fanfic. That I'm sure Drummer Max would know. <laughs> I'm sure he would as well. It, I, funny enough, I did a review on it and I can't remember its name. I was the one who approved it for ZNN. I think with the value of OCs um, and, and more importantly, just uh, OC content um, is the fact that it takes the world and it sort of takes it away, uh, takes it and expands it beyond the simple scope of Nick and Judy. I mean, as much as I love Nick and Judy, I mean, I love Nick and Judy. I'm wild hop shipper hundred percent. But what I also realize is that any good world and, and this is a great world, so much potential, is that it deserves to have parallel stories also running so that, and, and it also feels more real that way because then what happens is then you start playing that little game with yourself where you're like, okay, so while this is going on, that is going on. And while that's going on, this is going on. Um, a perfect example of this, and, and Marvel did it, fantastic. In fact, I think, I think the Marvel cinematic universe structure of how they did it is honestly the model that they should use. Um, but specifically in Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., they often had these sort of like kisses with the movies where, um, you know, S.H.I.E.L.D. is dealing with their own issues with Hydra. But then if you look on the TV screen behind them, you can see a scene where Captain America is jumping out of the building at, at uh, S.H.I.E.L.D. headquarters. And it's and it's and in other words, it's being reported as as live from S.H.I.E.L.D. headquarters. And it's like, well. In other words, when I watched the movie, that was happening. And then over here, this is also happening at the same time. And it basically says that this world is connected and is not simply referenced to. Um, a perfect example of worlds that are just referenced to is like NCIS or, or, um, or, or the uh, CSI shows. They are supposed to take place in the same universe, but they never, want, they never make references to each other 
And so you get the feeling of like, well, this is just three shows in the same universe, but you never really see that much interplay between the two, except the, you know, crossover events that they put on TV. But in and Marvel, they, they say this is happening and that is happening. That is canon. That is canon. And so having these OCs all, um, and it also has to do with the writers too. If the writers also make sure they connect to those events, you can get this sort of web of intrigue kind of structure where you have like this event and this story, this fic happening over here. And at the same time, it's this fic. And at this time it's, you know, either before or after the movie and you can create this whole organization, almost like a, like a conspiracy wall. <laughs> Yeah, and I and I love that interconnection and everything. And I'm, I mean, I don't really mean to toot my own horn, uh, but I wrote an OC fic. Um, some of you may be familiar with it, but I, I knew. Uh, <laughs> I uh, I my first thing I wanted to do was I wanted to ground it. I wanted to ground it in Zootopia. So yes, we're following OCs, but we also have Nick and Judy who show up in the very first chapter. We have Bogo. We have. Clawhauser, we have so many other characters intermingling, and I wanted to make sure that each of them actually had a purpose, despite this being a side story or a story, as Agent said, fleshed out the rest of the world, the rest of the city, and to taken from a different uh, perspective than Nick and Judy's. And in fact, I actually got a scathing review once because my main character did not view uh, Nick and Judy in a positive light. And my thoughts were, why should she? She doesn't have any, you know, affection for them. She's her own person, her own character, her own views and background and history. Why would she all of a sudden be loving on Nick and Judy like everyone else, you know, and other like they do in other fanfics? No, she is her own character. And I just I just felt that was extremely funny. But I just love reading OC fanfics and seeing how other writers dive into the world with them. Uh, and one of the major uh, fanfics I've been kind of following and I just love because it's kind of becoming OC centric itself is Born to be Wild by Berserker88. I mean, the, the OCs have taken over that particular, uh, but they, he still gives credit to Nick and Judy. Uh, they're still key players there, but uh, at this point I've grown to love pretty much every character in that story. So OC uh, fanfics, although not as popular as others, in the fandom, I still say have a lot of merit and still have their worth in the community. And in terms of, of, of character, oh, sorry. Uh, speaking of OC fix, I believe uh, the last stand by Crew Fox, if I said his name correctly, is it, it started off as a Nick and Nick and Judy uh, fanfic with uh, uh, an OC being introduced. And then slowly, it became a world with lots of OCs being introduced, if I recall and understand. I haven't it was, read like, the, it was like the marvel of Zootopia. <laughs> they do. He, uh, the author, does do a lot of uh, cameos, which I'm fine with cameos. When like, like a, uh, like authors using an OC from their story. From another author's story with permission as a cameo, I think it's really amazing. It, it just cameos can work, and I think they should be used from time to time. Like uh, cameos falling in OCs, cameos don't show up too much from just in general. Well, I'm of a mind, if you're going to include a cameo or something, I'd rather talk and discuss with the author, the other fellow author you're taking the character from, and uh, discuss how you can integrate the character into the plot and actually have a purpose of serving the plot, even if it's a minor one. Um, I think that would uh, mean a lot more uh, than just, you know, pop, hello, here I am, and then off he goes. Yes. It, also opens it, is up important, it is important to ask permission first before using p other people's characters. It also, opens up the, yes. it also opens up the possibility of like a cross cameo where like later that that author who got cameo in other words, if author B gets cameoed in thick A, right? And then if thick B, he then details that cameo, but from the point of view of his character. And so you now see the event from different points of view at this point, you know, is being described at different points of view. And you're saying, well, okay while this was going on, this is what was going on in, in cameo characters head at the time, because now that author's writing that scene. Yeah. It's all just fleshing out the world uh, through other characters. So it, it's just, it's a good thing. 
Yeah, I do uh, use cameos in my fanfic, but that's uh, for the news reporters since, well, we're ZNN. I ask permission from members of CNN if I can have them do something that actually pushes along the plot through news re- reels. And also, in terms of characters, I don't think Gazelle likes Judy. <laughs> I don't. I don't. Because the thing is this. I remember when they were doing the interview and she's like, just calling all predators, you know, savages, irresponsible. And I'm like, so in other words, she was talking literally about what Judy said. It, it would be amazing. Because especially since Judy loves Gazelle that much, it would be amazing if, like, in the second movie, they're like, you know, talking somehow talking to Gazelle, maybe running security or whatever, and then Gazelle basically fires back, you know, and basically calling her bigoted or something, you know, pointing back at the fact that you said what you said, and even though like they might sit there and explain, what was the night? How doesn't matter. You still said what you said, and it would be kind of amazing to see Gazelle like not love (laughs) Judy. You know, like that, wow, that would be quite traumatic. And speaking of traumatic, oh, should, good segue. Let's move on to our next topic: it's traumatic events and how they should be used or should well, be. Used. Well, let, let's define that. What What do you mean by traumatic events? Let's uh, define that for the listeners. Traumatic events. Um, I saw a comic once. It was really good. I loved it all the way through. Um, I can't remember its name, but essentially. Throughout the whole comic, it was alluded that Judy might have been paralyzed in an accident. But it turns out that she just had a, I think it was just a broken leg and she'll be fine. But I, the idea that something physical or mental was so damaging that it changes the character for life. Yeah. For instance, um, uh, Agent, I'm going to use you as an example. Mm -hmm. Um, He's always good for examples. When, um, darn, I can't remember the name of your fic. I'm sorry. Um, Shadows in the Dark. Shadows in the Dark. Shadows in the Dark when the ZPT is attacked. Oh, yes. And it's in chapter two. I don't even pull any punches. Yes, tr- it's quite traumatic, and we'll, we'll touch base on that segment a little bit. In the next topic? <laughs> yeah, in the next topic. But for now, traumatic events, like, I don't mean to be blunt, but, like, sexual crimes, torture, um, hostage situations going bad, just things that aren't rainbows and sunshine happening to a character i feel like they should be used but not in every fanfic correct every fanfic has its own thing like the slice of lives stay slice of lives maybe it had a little drama in there between nick and judy and then it just it go, they fix themselves then you've got like the grim dark noir fanfics out there <laughs> add a little uh add something that will shock them but not be in there just for shock value right uh um, and this is actually a that's actually that's actually something that that they that hollywood actually has a problem with in their movies lately it's it's when you and i can't believe i actually learned this from uh, actually mac walters um the guy who helped write the ending of mass effect 3 so um and and anybody who's listening here knows me uh knows exactly how I think of what they did to the end of that game. But traumatic events, you, when you bum somebody out, you have to bring them back to normal. Even if you don't solve the problem or it doesn't turn into like happy go lucky and like everything's wrapped with a bow, like Dark said about uh, the end of Zootopia, you can't just leave people in the dumps because it, I hate to say it as a writer, it's kind of a, 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 I don't know if I can curse, but it's kind of a move that it's like you can't just leave them that way you have to bring the person back up to a sense of normalcy so they can get a relief from what essentially feels like a kick to the the wingy bits Uh, (laughs) uh, (laughs) oh i have a great example but go on so in other words you you can't just leave people in the dumps um if because they're going to walk out and if they have a negative emotion from and you might have written that traumatic event very well but if you don't bring them back to a sense of normalcy, they're going to feel negative. They're going to say, this makes me feel bad. 
And then they might, they might misattribute that negative feeling to this is a bad fic or it's bad writing. And it's like, no, no, no. They made you feel an emotion, a very negative emotion. The problem is they didn't bring you back so that you can reach normalcy or feel better about the situation and then continue on. And so you can't leave people on a dark note. I agree with the leaving, do not leave them in a dark note, but I also don't, don't put the dark note and then two or three chapters later, they're fine. If it's right. that traumatic, it should last through most, if not nearly the entire It, it should change them. It should change them as a character. Yeah. Right. They should be scarred. Like, I, like physical or emotional, there should be scars that continue on and maybe even get referenced later. Like it affects them later, and because of that traumatic event, it you know it might mess them later. Like you know something happens where, uh, hell, a perfect example in the in the, in the movie itself where Nick, um, you know, gets mistreated as a as a child, that haunts him for the rest of his life. He distrusts people by their very nature, um, and ironically enough, you think he's a lonely, distrustful fox because he's a fox and it's like no 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 no. you find out he's acting that way because what other people did to him yeah and uh in some fanfics like myself we use a dramatic event and we essentially get shamed for it which i feel is not healthy for the community if if the person is going to try something different should let see how it goes if it's there and not used well then yeah it was a bad use but well then- i have a great example but um to pick back on you yeah a lot of people don't like to uh, those traumatic events and everything um especially if it affects characters uh, badly i mean as i said i have a great example uh, a great example have any of you seen uh red eye uh, from John Carpenter. No, I have not. Okay, it is a fantastic movie. It's a it's a it's a suspense thriller from the master of horror, John Carpenter, but it's not a horror film. It does not rely on any shock tactics or anything. It is just a tensely written. Uh, it's like a <laughs> alarmingly brief, like ninety minute film, um, basically about this. Yeah, it's a thriller about this woman who was raped when she was younger. Yes, there's that traumatic event, rape and everything. And she promised herself she would never let that happen to her again. So she has this inner result that she's not going to let this happen to her again. Um, so over the course of the story, she meets this you know nice man in the airport, and they get happen to be in the same, you know, sitting in the same seats together, right, on this airplane uh, during a red-eye flight. And he just so happens to be an assassin who is after her because she has some sort of information because she's a hotel manager about... Uh, information about a, a, a world leader or something who's going to her hotel and he needs information from her to get back to his man on the ground to kill that leader in her hotel. And he uses all sorts of very scary, very um, uh, almost like rapey type of things, but you, you know, they're on the airplane, so he can only do so much, but he's basically trying to intimidate her with his, his entire presence. And at first she falls back into that PTSD of when it happened to her so long ago. But then over the course of the film, she tries to find his, his weaknesses, tries to find out how she can, you know, best him. And then at the end of the movie, she basically is literally fighting for her life and kicks his, his butt pretty much. Um, and that so for is anybody who's going to go watch the movie, you don't need to watch it now. <laughs> Sorry, spoilers, but basically, but you should still watch it though. It's still amazing to watch this transformation of this character using this traumatic event as strength to fight against this seemingly insurmountable villain because he basically almost stops her at every turn the, in like the first two thirds of the movie. It's only towards the end where she starts to really figure him out and then uses her, you know, uses that, that moment of tra- trauma as a source of strength. And I think and not everybody can do that. Yeah, and that is a great way you can use that traumatic event to build a character during crisis. And I just don't see that a lot in the in the in the community. Kind of reminds me of the uh, the movie Split. Fantastic movie. Love the whole thing. Um, it, again, like you said, the main character had to deal with something that gets revealed in the movie, and because of 
her experiences, she tries to use those to help others who've been and just it just it just traumatic events can be used really well. And speaking of traumatic events, <laughs> I think there's one in particular. There's nothing more than seeing a beloved character die. I love this event, this traumatic event personally in my writing. I also have used it, but I think I probably didn't use it quite well. Enough. Should have built up more. But anyways, uh, Agent does I... has experience. Okay. <laughs> so that is what he is known for. <laughs> okay, so yeah, so one of the things that I and 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 I actually kind of like gimped uh pushed out on this, but um in chapter two of, of my fic, uh I kill off a particular main character very, very unceremoniously. Uh almost to the point of like like you got the feeling that the person doing the killing of that character just like just thought of him as just nothing. How dare you? Yeah, I and and, and apparently of what I did was because one of the reviews for that chapter or a couple like a couple chapters later, uh, but the review was about chapter two. I apparently brought some like fourteen year old girl to tears when that character died. To actually, she she told me in like five paragraphs of just how messed up that did it to her and i was just like oh damn and so actually so I, and i was gonna actually leave that character dead and then here's where i whooshed out because i was like i can't do this this poor girl <laughs> so i actually like I, I will say this though uh it did force me because i you know because i was written i wrote myself into a corner and i had to figure out how to get out of that corner and how to bring that character back but in a believable way within the confines of the rules of my story that I set for myself and, and, and see that's something about, uh, and you can, you can do that for, for the world building thing, uh, when we get to it, which is if you set a, a, a rules rule set for yourself, uh, in your world, whatever that rule set is, even if it's like fantastical stuff like star Trek, as long as you operate within that rule set and subsequently, and, and if you do have to bypass and you have to come up with a really clever fix, right as to why you can break the rule that makes it more believable and i did make her happy and 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 it, and it actually forced me to write this entire character arc for a character that i was not going to write a character arc for and just because i wrote myself into a corner and i felt really bad so and, you can and, say she hustled you yeah i could say she hustled me so whoever you are if you if you're if you're listening to this podcast and you read my fic and you're the girl who wrote that article, who's probably like 16, 17 now, I want you to know uh, I got your words and thank you very much. And it meant a lot to me. And, uh, and um, I hope the fix that I wrote uh, helped. And that uh, was a very sweet character death story. Uh, when it comes to traumatic events and character deaths like these, I do think you should warn the readers that something is going to happen. If it's if it's like in my story, I warned that this is not a child friendly story. Warning, <laughs> I'm about to kick you in the nuts. Essentially. <laughs> and I felt like people did not heed my warning and I was essentially blasted. Shunned. I was blasted. Oof. Even mm, though I, I remember that. Uh, funny enough, every single one of us in this podcast has had this blasting. Despite reading as much of the story as they did and knew what they were getting into. Mm -hmm. But I do think you should warn the readers if you're going to do something like that. True. Especially murdering half of ZPD. I kind of, well, yeah, I kind of <laughs> just do that. Hello! Yeah. yeah, you just spoiled that. <laughs> it's it's clear. I mean, well, when people come to my stories, uh, I make no mistake. Uh, they know what they're getting into when they read anything from me. It is going to be dark. It is going to be gritty. I don't write for teens and lower. Like I just, I just don't. I like the grim dark, but I also try and put some fluff in there that is earned. You know, you know, circling back around to the first topic, uh, I just, I just like to temper 
my stories with uh, grimdark and fluff and just go back and forth to kind of keep readers engaged and using all these serious and mature topics all together in one package will create a very interesting story that is, in my opinion, leagues beyond uh, you know things that I have read. Uh, yeah, I do think the thing with the Zootopia community, I, I mean, I love lots of cute pics and stuff like that. They just, they try to stay away from character deaths, traumatic events. It's just like they try to shut out the realism that would happen in that world. Well, except for Naterix. Naterix has that weird mecha nick thing going on, but yeah. I want to see that continue so bad. And it's ironic because it's the very realism that attracted them to the movie to begin with. Like, yeah, I remember. I remember. I clearly remember when when people were going back to the movie, movie, and me and my wife went back like seven times, right? And we thought we were weird. And and then when we were talking to people in the movie theater, in the various movie theaters, they're like, "Oh, I've seen it like ten times." Other people are like fourteen times, twenty times in the freaking theater. I'm like, "Holy wow!" And then and then when it came out on video, and they're like, "I've easily seen it fifty times." And of course, uh, you ask, yeah. And and you ask why? What motivated you to watch this so many times? Because you know, and it's it, no, this, this isn't like Superman or the Batman, or this isn't uh, you know, this isn't like one of those movies that you could see like ten thousand times, right? You know, to like super ultra fans, this is something that was original, came out of nowhere. I mean, heck, even Disney just put it in March because that's where they put their filler movies because they were trying to get to Moana, and ironically enough, Zootopia made more money. And That's the question hilarious. was to the people was, how is it that this movie is so attractive to you? And the, every response was, well, it was because it was so realistic. It was a little dark. It was about as dark as, as Disney can go or has gone bef- before. And <laughs> they haven't seen the Black Cauldron. Yeah, well, yeah, I'm, I understand that. But <laughs> that was kind of mind, a fluke. Th- it was kind of a fluke. And it's also something that's been locked in the Disney vault for like 30 years. Like they don't even want to, that and Songs of the South, like the two movies, they don't want to admit that they ever made. But uh, Zootopia is had a level of darkness to it. And I was like, wow, I guess Disney's growing up. And I was actually impressed. I wasn't offended. I mean, I'll tell you, I'll tell you where I was like, it was, it, it went to a level of dark I've never, I had never seen. And it was when they were going to talk to Manchus and you saw Manchus eye and like, did he lose the, lose the eye? Like, and then he tells a story about what happened in the, in the limo. And you're like, did they actually maim a, a character in a in a in a, a a movie and at first you think that until later he's gone uh, Manchus has gone savage and you see both eyes and you're like ah oh, disney you could have like made a you could have totally like kept that you know just kept his eye shut you're not showing a not not be disgusting and show like an empty socket or anything but i mean you could have kept the eye sh- shut but i'm saying this <sighs> is that like in before the reveal that he still had both eyes and I was thinking, thinking you maimed the character. I'm like, I actually sat there and went, "Bravo, Disney, bravo!" And then they didn't, they didn't continue with it. I'm like, oh, you know, yeah, like, I, I hate it when when they tease you with something that will affect a character so much that they they can't ever go back to the way things were. Like another great example, I don't know if I don't think you guys have seen the How to Train Your Dragon television show. Uh, Rough Nut and Tough Nut. I forgot which one's the female, but the female to save a dragon, she had to cut off her ponytails. They literally made a new model with the character without her ponytails. And I was like, oh crap, they actually went there. And then the very next episode, she had him back. And I'm like, come on, really? I, that could have been an amazing character moment. Can you explain that to me? Because I, I, I haven't seen How You Train Your Dragon. So what's, what's the significance of that? Uh, she it's a defining characteristic trait of her character she she uh cares about her appearance and everything in her ponytails the hair is a is a matter of pride with the vikings there and so she cut it off to save a dragon like that was a sacrificial move on her part and i was like if they kept her hair like that for the rest of the season that would have been a huge monumental character moment building moment for that person and then the very next episode she got it back and i'm like so you, it'd be like you drop like the ball uncrossing derpy who's his eyes for some heroic moment yeah 
I, I love Derpy, by the way. Like, I'm not into My Little Pony that much, but like, I absolutely love Derpy. I actually got like a Derpy shot glass, and I got a Derpy uh, cup and a glass cup. Like, it's like a it's like a highball glass. Funny He's how she's now Agent Derpy. Yeah, well, a- it's funny how she is always on alcohol related things. I've noticed. That's probably the reason for the eyes. <laughs> uh, but yeah, uh, with all these things, that also every single one of these topics we've talked about also moves into world building and realism. And when it comes to realism, something that bugs me a lot when it comes to fanfics, comics, or anything like that, Nick and Judy are a couple within the zpd and that i believe is not workplace etiquette they a lot of fanfic writers ignores place etiquette mm. and i've seen that in your fanfic too lucario <laughs> i i do i do know this i had them separate in the very beginning it was only for the case that they went back mm, okay because i because my plot demanded it. Continue, Agent. <laughs> um, I do know this because I, I haven't read it in the NYPD like handbook. Because I was actually really curious about that. Okay, so two cops being together. Okay, actually, ironically enough, and it, I, it and, and I was surprised. It's not against the policy, but it is frowned upon, at least in NYPD. Uh, other places have explicit like policies that say no. But I will say this, though. They generally are like, okay, you two can be in a relationship. You two can even get married. You are not going to be partners together in that situation. Like, you're going to be over here doing this on on because the way they organize the city is they have like not just different precincts, but the precincts then divide their patrol routes into separate little things. So it's like you're going to be in patrol group A and you're going to go in that area of the city and you're going to be in patrol group B and you're going to go work some in, in in another area of the city. Like you can in other words, when you leave here, you can go do whatever you want. You can do you know all the you know blue on blue cop you know action you want to do off the clock. But when you're here. You both get separate partners. You both get separate cars. You both get separate, you know, things because of that exact reason. Because as yeah. a cop, you're gonna because they are f- just deathly afraid you're gonna come down to this situation. There's gonna be a radio call. There's gonna be two radio calls, and it's gonna be your your significant other is under fire, and they need you to go do something else over here and secure this area. And you make the judgment call to say, I'm gonna go save my significant other and go help them out. And because you weren't where you needed to be, you either defied orders or you or you were the closest to something and you did not say, I'm going to go do that. You went and did that, w- went and saved your significant other. The bad guy gets away or the or the the perimeter is not secure. There's a hole. And that's where they that's where they managed to get through and, and out of the cordon. And then they end up hurting someone else as a result. So it's like because of your connection and, and it's like in, in a way they're not doing it to be mean. They understand that you have feelings for this person, but because of that, because of love and attraction, it's the one thing that can make you override your, uh, your, your ability to be obedient to an order that needs to be done because your superior officer may be looking over the situation saying, well, I need this guy here. And if you're not there and, and you go do something like that, then all, all of a sudden it's like you, you, you went and did that. And and I yeah. needed you here, and you weren't here, and, and that's you know the that was that for would make your own. an excellent fanfic, actually. And if it hasn't been written, someone should write something like that, uh, using that as the premise, because that would be fantastic to to read about the fallout of what would happen as a result of that. Yeah, yeah. The, like the thing, like there's so many. Almost every fanfic I've read usually has a thing where there's an office. Run- and they have the same shift. They're both on the same car and everything. And I'm like, I'm pretty sure, realistically, they would have separate shifts or different partners. Well, Even only if people they- knew. Only if people knew. I mean, but, I mean, the way they make it in most fanfics, it's pretty obvious. Like, yeah, I mean, even Clawhouse was shipping them openly in the over his donuts. Mm-hmm. If it was a case of like 
they're purposely keeping it hidden. They're making sure Bogo doesn't know. Like that would add some nuance and some intrigue. And you're like, oh dang, they're actually like yeah. trying to avoid Bogo. And, yeah, and, and that thing, would be but, different. But most of the time it's clear they're not hiding it. Yeah. And or, that's bugs me because they're like they're not hiding it yet there's no punishment that's not being taken serious they're like oh it's just it's just young love they're so adorable to get i'm like i'll give you a perfect it's example. A recommendation why are i'll they, actually give you oh sorry go ahead. i was like why are they not getting reprimanded why are they not being separated why are they not being talked to about this they need to be drawn and quartered is what they need to be done <laughs> <laughs> not that bad Court that, would be, that would be a traumatic <laughs> event there I know. Might lead might lead to some character deaths. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> but a perfect example, I think. Um hold on, let me think, let me think, let me think. I think it's Zootopia Rush or Zootopia. I, it's what's one of my other fix. Um I actually addressed that because I because even I was as I was writing, I was getting to the point where I'm like, man, I think Bogo would know about this by now. And so finally I took it to a point where Nick does exactly that. He refuses a direct order. And he basically beats the crap out of this guy who's harassing Judy. And I mean, like, beats him hard, like to the point where it's like, uh, you know, ZPD, you know, excessive force. Like that's the accusation. And Bogo calls him up and says, all right, I knew about your relationship. I was fine with it because I was your friend and I shouldn't have, like, and then there's, he's chastising himself for, for allowing himself to be that friendly. And it's like, I didn't have a problem with it. And he points to the, what's going on on TV. Now it's a problem. And now you need it. Like now that here comes the, the, here comes the, you know, the shit raining down. And it's just like, yeah. If like, if writers did like that, where it was like unspoken and then they addressed it later and it, whether it be an event that, that, that triggers it, or it's just addressed later. Like, like I said, remember how I said coming up with a set of rules in your universe or in your world, and then finding a clever fix to it or, or explaining why that is. It, it it shows the it shows the reader that you as the writer are self aware that here's a thing that might be a tad unrealistic and you've you've actually thought of how to fix that or how to explain that and it just shows that attention to detail that if you don't leave it like if you just leave it then the readers gonna sit there and go do they know this is going on are the is the author aware of this and then of course the subsequent review that comes back going like well this wouldn't happen. You know, the old this wouldn't happen review that I'm sure a lot of writers. Uh, yeah, and it just draws the reader right out of the story if you don't answer those questions. And that's the last thing you want is a reader to be drawn out of the story. Exactly. But if you come up with a fix or an explanation or a, 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 a thing like that, then it's like, then, you know, what it is the reader sits there, gets to that point, and goes, oh, like, oh, clever, clever, you know, and they just, and, 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 and so. It pulls them out for a second, but then they acknowledge the cleverness of it and go right back in and go, well, now I'm going to keep reading because I want to see not only more of the story, but I want to see the more the cl cleverness of this person. Continuing on with uh, realism, another thing is we're going to touch back on that uh, racism thing. How people, again, like they ignore it. I actually brought it back up in my fanfic that Judy's actions did not only just affect ZPD, but places all around them and other people's lives. Like, saying something that causes a race war, essentially, is not going to be ignored. It is going to have underlying effects. Maybe, uh... I mean, some people might have personal vendettas against Judy because of she was the focal point of starting this whole war. Exactly. Because she said this, this pig said this to another person who took what they said and did some hate crime towards some other species. And then that character might bring up the point that Judy caused my pain. Mm -hmm. um, caused my pain, or something like that. Like a, mm -hmm. there could be instances of a wolf not getting a job that he was guaranteed because of the fear, and then he might just now hate all rabbits because of Judy. 
do you guys remember an age of uh no not age of ultron what was it uh captain america winter soldier or is it civil war it it was no it was civil war it was the scene right after tony stark gives that little presentation and he's uh sitting with that that uh, black woman waiting for the elevator and all of a sudden he realizes the button's not pushed and they have this thing about basically her son was lost in sokovia right and he was just in other words he was one of the people on the ground you know one of those people you just completely ignored when you actually watch that movie and just the fact that she looks at him with these like dead eyes and just puts the picture against his chest and goes you know i lost my son and i blame you and I, and then she just walks away and i and, and just leaves him there with that like uh, 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 like that just like oh my yeah. god I, yeah. I, I that that scene really got to me too and i know that the movie uh, zootopia like completely glossed over um and wrapped it up in a nice neat little bow because you know they had to you know they had to end the movie at some point i get that but if they do the sequel and i know they they will at one point they you should have a scene like they, that they should address the fallout because if they go they into the second scene. plot and there's nothing no repercussions over this from the first they should movie. have a scene exactly like that i mean exactly like that because a it shows repercussions into it would be kind of a uh, kind of a tongue in cheek sort of homage to that to that scene as well but i mean yeah there should be like that thing where just like you have that 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 music and and that just that that emotional gut punch of just like you know I lost mine and it opens like, up and I blame yeah. you and it opens up the possibility that these racial and prejudice issues are still not gone. They're still there in Zootopia and it might open up a way to a possible, uh, spit to arc span, uh, mm -hmm. movie, you know, you know, trilogy, hint, hint, wink, wink, Disney, um, uh, you know, just exploring all these issues. And honestly, I think Zootopia is perfect is the perfect breeding ground for these tough issues like racism, uh, sexism, uh, interracial relationships, in this case interspecies, um, all these tough topics that most people don't really want to write about or to touch on or, or anything like that. Um, Zootopia is perfect for it. It's, mm -hmm. it's like the perfect uh, allegory for uh, all these things and to really just break it down to the base level and and, and write a good story about it with these characters and, and come up with a moral truth at the end of it. It's like the Joker said, you've changed things forever. She, she really did. And again, like something I've noticed with the movie that I've been really wanting to work on lately is how much of what Judy did was actually legal. And would hold up in court. <laughs> uh, pretty much that anything after she I, quit. Was pretty much vigilante. Even when she case. was doing her things. Even when she was still on the force. She. Basically blackmailed. A citizen. Uh, Nick Wilde. You, yep. And used a mob boss. To. To. Uh, Threaten another. Indeed. She also uh, basically just breaking and entering with uh, the limousine incident without a. Uh, True. She used a loophole. True. She used a loophole, but still. Well, it, that, that loophole would only work if she actually prosecuted Nick. Exactly. She would have to actually arrest him and make it an incident report and go, oh, well, then there's the probable cause. If it's probable cause, put it this way. If she's sitting there citing probable causes or defense, it's like, okay, then why didn't you arrest the guy? Like, you let the guy that created the probable cause situation go, but then you use that to get, like, you can't have it both ways. You can't sit there and go, I'm going to have my CI break the law and then not arrest him. Exactly. Oh, yeah. he, she, uh, she, also, she took her cake and ate it, too. Mm -hmm. But everything yeah, after she, she was, quit. She had, broke her into the asylum. She, I can't think of a single incident where it was legal except for going to the, funny enough, the Mystic Oasis. And, and, the, DMV. and the DMV, yep. Those are the only two things that are, I think were legal. I would love to get a lawyer to watch Zootopia and just break down what was legal and what was not legal. Destruction of public property, I guarantee you, was not legal. 
Uh, I also think because of her actions, I think Bellwether would not be in prison. That's true. That's true because um, all the evidence she gathered cannot be used. I mean, her her lawyer could argue that, but I mean, in other words, if, if a citizen finds evidence and then gives it to the police, then that I mean, eh, yeah. I mean, I get I get your point, but it could be argued by the lawyer, you know, improper impropriety with the evidence chain or some something like that. He could probably try to get her off and on a technicality or reduce her sentence. She was also yeah. never in the system in the first place. So that would make her a citizen putting in the infra, uh, the uh, evidence. It doesn't and matter. She, like, in, in that case, she's giving it to Bogo. Like, Bogo is the system. Like, you know, if he gives her evidence, regardless of whether she's a cop or not, he can choose to do what he wants with, with, with that information. But um, if I will say this, though, th there would definitely be an think... argument to be made if I, to get that evidence, required you to break the law. Yeah, that actually can. You can argue to get evidence thrown out, even if the evidence is like, it's like, it's a, you know, practically a, a stated confession. It's like, yeah, but that was gathered through illegal means and, and, and you could argue it and then get it thrown out of court. And then the, then the jury would be forced to make the judgment without that confession. And the case is really screwed. Yeah. That's why i like, I look at it. I'm like, I just really want to do a special for ZNN for the fans to find out if Bellwether is going to jail or not. Same with, uh, what was it? Uh, uh, Mayor Lionheart. What was he technically in trouble for? Kidnapping. 12 counts of kidnapping. That's about it. And, and I think hiding evidence that would have helped. Yeah, but also hiding evidence that would have helped the case. Oh yeah, obstruction of justice too. Yeah, obstruction yeah. of justice. But but kid, put it this way: kidnapping. You kidnap a person, you go away for twenty years. You kidnap several people, that can actually be a life sentence, especially if they do it like consecutively, and not concurrently. And because of all these like laws and stuff, uh, it goes into world building. It just a lot of fanfics have Zootopia pretty static, in my opinion. I have so many questions. Like exactly those questions you just asked. I have so many, so many questions about like where is Utopia going to go and and can we see it go more and blah blah blah. Like and again, this is something that a lot of people are like, oh, we need a second movie. Honestly, I really think Utopia would do better as a TV show. To me, honest, I do too. I, I mean, there's this. there's a lot of potential for stories there and introduction of so many OCs and have any of you uh, watched huge dramatic events that go over the course of a season? I mean, all that good stuff that we've just been talking about. I mean, I mean, cartoons cartoons used to touch all these topics. Zootopia could easily do it again mm -hmm. with the right writing. The guy that does the new DuckTales is who I would suggest to do that. If you have either that or the guy that does or that did, um, um, oh, God, what is it? Uh, Gravity Falls. Either one of those guys I would recommend to do it because that – Gravity Falls was good writing. Uh, the new DuckTales, uh, for anybody who hasn't seen it, uh, it's on Disney Plus. Uh, free plug Disney. Here you go. Um, <laughs> it's it's it, No, it's really good. It really is good. Um, it even makes callbacks. I mean, it even makes callbacks and actually canonizes like certain aspects of the NES video game, for God's sakes, because of there's a particular section on, on like the moon and one of the characters. I'm not going to spoil for anybody who wants to watch it, but it was just amazing. And I was just like, oh my God, this is like really good writing for a Disney cartoon show. And I'm like, this, would, and, and I, I even like the animation style. Like even if Zootopia wasn't 3D animated and it was like this, I'd be okay with that. And uh, just to hop over to Warner Brothers for a quick moment, uh, Batman the Animated Series in the 1990s, I think it was. Oh. Um, that had oh, some I remember great, that. Oh, they had some great writing. I mean, sure, there were a couple yes. clunker, clunker episodes, but some of the uh, writing, it got through so many dark themes and emotions and a mm -hmm. full character arc for not just one, but like multiple characters in a single 22-minute uh, uh, a show and I was just like, that is phenomenal writing. 
It reminds uh, me of uh, Teen Titans as well. Before it got stupid. Uh, it's, <laughs> it's so child friendly. I hate but it. yeah, I mean that that show the the not 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 Teen Titans, uh, but um, the original Batman the animated series that 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 basically just made Kevin Conroy's career. But yeah, it's just I do think with the right setups, fanfics, comics, even animated things can do well with wild with the proper. Writings for Wild Hawks, Interspecies, Original Characters, Tragic Offense, Character Deaths, World Building, and Realism. There's many fix out there that touch on these and do really well. Then there's and there's fix that don't touch them. And they just focus on one thing. It's just Plus. one one copy I, I do want to want see. I want to see Zootopia evolve instead of being its stagnant fluff eccentric quota i will say this though and and, and just so anybody listening I, I don't want you to think that we're bagging on the fluff like no there, it, the, it the, is very much needed. every every meal I mean, yeah. every meal needs a slice of cake but a slice of cake and the meal does not incorporate only the cake and the whole cake and we don't have meat and potatoes it all needs to be balanced so zootopia like the meal Needs to be balanced. We need to have meat and potatoes. We need to have the salad. We need to have the the the, the cake. Um, Don't so the there's a place for it. <laughs> Don't forget the peas. Yeah. yeah. So th- there's there, greens. there's there's a there's a place for fluff. And so I'm not saying there shouldn't be any fluff. And I'm not saying that the the amount of fluff that exists needs to go down. It's just that we need a also commensurate level of meat and potatoes writing to 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 pair along with it so that. It's not too sweet. It's not too salty. It's not too uh, bitter. It's not too umami. Whatever. <laughs> I, I think I'm losing the metaphor, but um, it, it needs to be balanced the, and, and and allowed to evolve. Definitely, Zootopia as a world is so full of potential, so amazingly just robust, and yet we saw a glimpse of this through the movie, and as a result, it got a lot of people interested in this world to the point where they just they want to dive in they want more and disney for god's sakes if you're listening make either a tv series or a sequel i, I it, look i i understand that you guys are going through the covid thing right now and and you guys are are going through uh, some financial issues outside of that too but i'm telling you if you make a sequel or you make a, uh, a television show it's going to the, the, the people will come back to quote Field of Dreams, if you build it, they will come. And I actually, I actually have another quote. And uh, do you mind if I read it from uh, Lord of the Rings? Uh, it's actually Sam's speech at the end of Two Towers. Um, it's like in the great st- stories, Mr. Frodo, the ones that really mattered, full of darkness and danger they were. And sometimes you didn't want to know how they ended. Because how could they ever be happy? How could the world go back to the way it was when so much bad happened? But in the end, it's only a passing thing, this shadow. Even darkness must pass. A new day will come. And when the sun shines, it will shine out the clearer. And those were the stories that stayed with you. That meant something, even if you were too small to understand why. That is a fantastic quote, and I think it applies to pretty much everything we've been talking about here. Mm-hmm. I do agree. I if you just have too much of one thing, people grow bored. That's why I honestly stopped reading fanfics because as a pre-reader, I just kept coming across the same thing. It's a little different here, a little bit different there, but the premise, the plots, the fluff is just all the same and I had a really hard time trying to remember this fic from that fic because they were so similar but then you've got stories like in darkness i hide um uh the plug stinks fall uh uh pack street they're all so different they have the darkness they have the fluff they have the original characters they have the world building and that's what those stories draw me in more 
than reading how Nick and Judy are going to get to kiss without Bogo noticing. <laughs> Which can be a crisis in and of itself, but yeah, if written right. But overall, I just want to see Zootopia evolve, be a little more bold in its writing, and most importantly, have fun with it. Come on, Disney. You can do it. We believe in you. We love you. And also, come on. And also, all the fanfic writers out there, too. We believe in you, too. I mean, we want to see and read all these awesome stories that I know are just waiting out there. Zootopia is rife with uh, possibility. And uh, this is just some of the topics that, you know, we three at least, me, Agent, and Lucario, just really want to see more of because, you know, that's just what we thrive in. We need fresh material. Come on, Disney. That too. <laughs> and with that, this has been ZNN After Dark. Meep. Uh, <laughs> bye, everybody. Good night, folks. <laughs>